Good morning everybody um, and welcome to our tip of the week. Today I will be talking a little bit about uh, the change process and why it's important to sort of understand what happens to people during times of change. Um, whenever we're leading change or a change happens to us, um, we generally have uh, three different types of responses to change. We uh, can be an early adapter, which means that we're ready for the change, we're excited about it, and um, we want it. And, and we're the first sort of to step over uh, the dividing line between the way it's been and um, the future, the unknown. Because really when we're talking about navigating change, we're talking about leaving what is known, familiar, and usual, and moving into what is unknown, unfamiliar, and unusual. And even though that, that um, at depending on the change, it might seem like a good change, it's equally as scary for us. But uh, we can be an early adapter, which means we're ready. Um, the, the second group or the second response to change is uh, sort of needing more information and nor more support and feeling like we're being paced through the process, which means that we are, um, we're interested in the change. Um, we may find it a little bit scary or we may be a little bit uncertain and we just want to know that we're going to be taken care of and that we understand our role as we cross over. Uh, and the third uh, response or type of uh, person that you'll see in times of change are the resistors. And um, we all have a resistor in us and we all have experienced resistance in response to a change that's taking place. Sometimes changes ha are thrust upon us very quickly. Um, other, other times we're choosing to create a change in our life. So um, if it's a change that has been thrust upon us, we may be in resistance to that. And uh, what we'll see in our communities is um, groups of resistors that are against a change. And what I always invite you to consider is that resistors are an important part of the process. When we're never going to get rid of resistors or the resistance and that we need to look at them as an important part of any process. Uh, often the voice of resistance is um, protecting something or um, taking care of something that is very, very dear. It could be a core value or a belief system and it's in protection of that. It doesn't want to lose something. It might stand, it might be standing for something like equality or justice or truth. Uh, unless we sort of take the time to hear from the resistors and to understand them better and to allow them to share their voice and to share their concerns, they will continue to be in resistance. Um, and what we'll see in an organizational setting or in a, on a community level is that if the resistors don't feel heard uh, and they feel marginalized um, or pushed to the margins, they will, um, they will use tactics uh, to resist any process. So uh, they, it can become tr quite troublesome for those people in leadership roles. In terms of our own internal voice of resistance, notice if you are in resistance to a change that's happening. And um, instead of trying to make yourself uh, change, just ask yourself, why are you in resistance? What is the thing that is most important to you that you feel might be lost in the process? Um, if you can articulate that, then you can start to articulate your needs around what you want to preserve in any change process. Whenever there's a change taking place, um, it means loss of some sort to us. So what is the thing that we feel we're going to lose if we navigate a change together? And that's what we need to talk about. How do we navigate the change um, in a way uh, where we don't feel like we're having to give up our identity in any way or a part of our identity or a belief system? Um, so have a great week and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.